everyone. Welcome back to another Morning is Breaking Channel program. Thanks for joining us today. At more than any time in the record of our lives here on earth, we need to be drawing near and near to our God and Creator so that we can stand true to Him and be ready for the final events that are soon to take place. Our topic today is the remedy. Let's have a word of prayer before we get started. Father in heaven, we pray for your Holy Spirit to now guide us and teach us in this study today. In Jesus' name, amen. I think that most of us would agree that there has been a serious increase in crime, corruption, and disasters everywhere in our world. The hearts of men are becoming more and more evil. There seems to be an unnatural delight in afflicting pain upon human beings. This was not God's original plan in creating the human race. An enemy has brought our world to this condition, and that enemy is sin. The human heart has become a battlefield upon which there is a constant warfare going on where our conscience is seeking to rule and our mind is struggling for the victory over wrong thoughts and actions. God made us in the beginning to be perfect and holy. His law demands perfect obedience, obedience that we are incapable of, it, of performing on our own. Even though sin has brought about this change in the human heart, holiness and righteous living is still within the reach of all who will reach out for it by faith, not because of our own good works, which is nothing in the sight of God, but because of Christ's righteousness. Divine power is provided for every soul struggling for victory over sin and Satan. The Bible tells us that everyone who is born into this world is born in sin, which means that we have a natural appetite toward doing the things that are wrong. It's in our nature. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Here in Psalms chapter 51 and verse 5, it says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Sin is in our nature, but God has provided a remedy for this sin problem in our lives. Here in John chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17, it tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And again, here in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 and 9, the Bible tells us, but God commended his love toward us. He demonstrated his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Through Christ, we can be brought back into a relationship with God as if we had never sinned. Here in the book, Heavenly Places, uh, page 13 in paragraph 3, it tells us as soon as there was sin, there was a Savior. Christ knew that he would have to suffer, yet he became man's substitute. As soon as Adam sinned, the Son of God presented himself as surety for the human race. There was not one human being in the world who was without sin. The Son of God stepped down from his heavenly throne, laid off his royal, royal robe and kingly crown, and clothed his divinity in human form. He came to die for us and be placed in the grave and be raised up from the dead for our justification. He came to become acquainted with all the temptations that man is tempted with so that he can can help us. Here in Romans chapter 3 and verse 10, 11, and 12, it tells us, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand it. There is none that seek it after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. 
This is our true condition, but God made Jesus to be sin for us so that we can stand before God in the judgment as if we have never sinned. Jesus is our substitute. He is our surety of peace with God. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and uh, verse 21, it says, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. First John chapter four and verse nine and 10 tells us that in this was manifested the love of God toward us because God, that God sent his son, his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Through the plan of salvation, Jesus is breaking Satan's hold upon the human family and rescuing souls from his power. Satan himself knows well that all who ask God for forgiveness of sin and grace to overcome him will obtain it. Therefore, he keeps our sins before us and tries to discourage us, but we must not believe his lies. It is true that we must all one day give an account for the way that we have lived, but if we have Jesus covering us, we can do, we do not have to fear the judgment. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse 10 says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. But the good news is that we have a judge who is also our savior and friend in the judgment. Therefore, if Jesus is Lord of our lives, we have nothing to fear about the judgment. Here in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1 and 2, it says, My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate, we have a lawyer with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. But in order for him to, to, in order for him to remain our substitute, we must remain in a saving relationship with him and believe that he is able to keep us from sinking into sin. Jude chapter 1 and verse 24 gives us this promise. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Our battle with sin is real. And it seems that when we want to do right, we feel sin drawing us. And this is when we need the power of Christ to help us. He can strengthen us to do what is right and pleasing to God. God is able to bring us to a point in our relationship with him where the pure things that we once hated, we begin to love. And the evil things that we once loved, we begin to hate. Through Christ living out his life in us, we will be restored back to harmony with God. The Ten Commandment law of God reveals to us what sin is, but it provides no remedy for sin. But God gives us hope here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57 and Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. The Bible tells us, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. If we sin, we must be quick to confess that sin to God and seek his forgiveness right away and not put it off. Jesus is the only one that can give us freedom from the grip of sin. Jesus tells us here in John chapter 15 and verse 4 and 5, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. In the book, Desire of Ages, the comments on this particular verse says, This union of Christ, once formed, must be maintained. This is no casual touch, no off and on connection. The branch becomes a part of the living vine. The communication of life, strength, and fruitfulness from the root to the branches is unobstructed and constant. 
separated from the vine, the branch cannot live. No more, said Jesus, can you live apart from me. The life you have received from me can be preserved only by continual communion. Without me, ye cannot overcome one sin or resist one temptation. God has provided a remedy for sin through a saving relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. If we stay connected to him, sin will become hateful to us and we will begin to love the things of God. My prayer for you today is that you will surrender your life to Christ and abide in him and experience true freedom from the guilt of sin through his power fully working in you. Until next time, may God keep you in his care and may he bless you in a way that you never expected. God bless.